Casey's Top 40 is heard in the 50 states and around the world every week on great radio stations like the oldie station AM 1590 WTRW Two Rivers, Wisconsin, and Yes 104.1 FM Barbados. Now, rolling in at number 33, here's the highest of this week's three debuts. Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? By newcomer Paula Cole. Casey's Coast to Coast. I'm Casey Kasem. These are the week's biggest hits from 40 to number one, and we're counting them down. Soaring in 11 notches to number 22 is the first hit for Paula Cole, a singer who grew up in an artistic home. Her mother is a visual artist, and her father played bass in a polka band. Here's Paula carrying on the family tradition. Well, now we're up to the hit, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? By a newcomer who grew up in a very small town where radio reception wasn't very good. But there was lots of music, thanks to her folk-singing, polka-playing father. Paula Cole grew up in Rockport, Massachusetts, which she describes as, quote, very little, a town where everybody knows everybody. Rockport sits at the end of Cape Ann, a peninsula that juts out into the Atlantic in northern Massachusetts. Paula says that because of its remote location, it was hard to get a clear radio signal. But that didn't matter because her father brought lots of music into their home. Although he worked as a biology professor at Salem State College, music was his second career. Early in life, he had played bass in a polka band. He put himself through college supporting his family by working as a musician. And he never strayed far from that world of music. Paula says he used to walk through the house playing blues progressions on the guitar while I improvised songs. Singing in three-part harmony in the car was an everyday occurrence for us. And growing up with all that music around her, it's not surprising that music became Paula's world. This week, she climbs three notches to number 13 on our survey. Number five. Rising three notches is Paula Cole, one of the participants of the upcoming Lilith Fair, a tour dedicated to the music of women. Casey's Top 40. And dropping a notch to number 18 on Casey's Top 40 is Paula Cole. The singer-songwriter says her second CD, This Fire, represents a major step in her development as a musician. Quote, there's a blossoming of self on this album. The flower has opened, has been in the sun, and is unafraid. I'm taking more chances. I'm bold. I'm proud. Unquote. Casey's Top 40. I'm Casey Kasem. These are the nation's biggest hits by the world's hottest stars. Holding steady at number 36 is Paula Cole, a star who normally likes to spend time at home in New York with her two cats. But this week, she'll be on the road in Pennsylvania and in Canada as part of the all-female tour called The Lilith Fair. Casey counts us down. Well, now we're up to the hit, I Don't Want to Wait. It's by a singer who, after a decade away from home, was reluctant to return. She thought the songs that she had written about her hometown would make her an outcast. Paula Cole left her hometown of Rockport, Massachusetts, soon after she graduated from high school in 1986. And in the 10 years between then and 1996, when she returned for a high school reunion, she went through a lot, from going to the prestigious Berklee School of Music in Boston to having what she describes as a nervous breakdown. She worked as a singer at weddings and in bars, and she spent her spare time writing songs, many of them about growing up in a small town. Those songs eventually became the heart of her 1994 debut album, Harbinger, an album that Paula says was like publishing her diary for all the world to read. Because so many of the songs on the album were clearly about her hometown, Paula says she was terrified to go back for her 10-year reunion. She feared that friends and family would be upset with the way she portrayed them. But as Paula found out, their love for her was far deeper than she realized. She says, quote, I realize most of the monsters were in my head, not in my town. These days, Paula Cole is being accepted just about everywhere she goes, thanks to the success of her recent top ten smash, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? And this week, her latest hit climbs three notches to number 19 on Casey's Top 40. Here's I Don't Want to Wait. Casey's Top 40 
Riding in at number 22 is Paula Cole. 97 was the year Paula broke through, and she was loving every minute of it. She couldn't wait to get on the road saying, quote, I love the physicality and yang energy of performance. I love dancing. I can let go and feel the force. Here's Paula with Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Casey's Top 40. Well, now we're up to I Don't Want to Wait. It's by a singer who says she keeps the pressures of stardom under control by living a very simple life. A life where she grows all her own vegetables and spends as much time stretching as she can. This woman from Rockport, Massachusetts, says that the demands of stardom, the writing, touring, and the personal appearances can certainly wear a person down in body and soul. And she says the hectic pace would get to her, except that she maintains some serious separation between her public life and her private life. In fact, the same passion she pours into her music, she pours into living a very quiet existence out of the spotlight. She says that at home, whenever she can, she tends to her garden, organically growing all the vegetables that she uses in her kitchen. She says she's constantly working on her cooking, trying to teach herself to become a really skillful vegetarian chef. She says at home, she spends a lot of time playing with her two cats. She calls them her best friends. And every day, without fail, she practices the ancient Hindu discipline called yoga. She relaxes herself with stretching exercises and breathing exercises that make all the stress in her life fade away. And this week, stress-free, Paula is enjoying the fruits of her success with her second top ten hit in a row. Here's Paula Cole with I Don't Want to Wait. Top 40 I'm David Perry. Now jumping four notches to number 33 is Paula Cole, who says one of her greatest inspirations is the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin. Here's Paula with me. That's recent Grammy winner for Best New Artist, Paula Cole with me. This week the song comes in at number 37 as the second of our four debuts. It's from coast to coast. Rising two notches to number 31, it's Peter Gabriel's former backup singer and the queen of her senior prom. That's right. Casey's Coast to Coast. And now we're up to another. And she's a star who used to be so painfully shy, she'd sing in public with her eyes closed and her back to the audience. Over the years, we've heard about more than a few artists with severe cases of stage fright. One of the most famous has to be Rod Stewart. In his early years, he was so terrified of facing the audience, he'd sing while hiding behind an amplifier. Joan Osborne says she's so shy on stage that throughout her career, she's had to sing with her eyes closed. And pretty much the same is true of singer Paula Cole. In her early years, Paula says she'd do her entire show with, quote, my eyes shut the entire time. But she found that wasn't enough. She could still feel the audience in front of her. So, for a long time, she got into the habit of performing with her eyes shut and with her back turned to the audience. But Paula says that after a while, she realized that wasn't working. The audience was responding to her by talking and ordering food and drinks. She was pretending they weren't there, and they responded by pretending that she wasn't there. She says, quote, Ultimately, I had to move through my fears and insecurities. If I wanted to impart a positive message, I had to do it with a positive image. This week, the singer-songwriter who faced up to her fears moves down a notch to number 17 in our survey. Here's Paula Cole with I Don't Want to Wait. <laughs> Now, we're up to the song, I Believe in Love, by a singer who believes that her whole life changed the day she went to a Baptist church in Boston. Paula Cole grew up in the small town of Rockport, Massachusetts. She says it was, for the most part, a white middle-class town with few people of color. Paula says it wasn't until she was accepted at the prestigious Berklee College of Music in Boston that America's cultural diversity opened up to her. And it opened up one Sunday morning when a friend took Paula to a black Baptist church in Boston. Paula says that even though she had heard gospel music on albums, she had never actually felt what the gospel experience was really like. And she felt it that Sunday, as the congregation swayed and the choir sang with a level of excitement that kept growing until it reached a crescendo. Paula says for the first time in her life, she really felt music. She felt it in the marrow of her bones and in her soul. She says, quote, 
That choir really turned my head around, so much so that within weeks she was singing in that church choir. Paula had found the sound that touched her heart. This week, the first song from Paula's latest album, appropriately titled Amen, moves up two notches to number 36 on our survey. Here's Paula Cole and her band with I Believe in Love. I'm Ed McMahon, in for Casey Kasem. And slipping a notch to number 34 on AT40 is the latest hit from Paula Cole. Paula says it's an incredible feeling to hear your song on the radio. She says, quote, It always sounds so much better on the radio. They use lots of compression, and it makes the song sound so fantastic. You feel like you're in a time warp, unquote. Well, Paula, if you're listening, here's your latest hit, I Believe in Love. Five years ago this week, one of the top hits in the USA was I Don't Want to Wait by a singer whose big break was like a scene in a movie. One of the stars of a tour couldn't do it, and this unknown stepped in to replace her. At the time, Paula Cole was an aspiring singer who worked as a baker to pay the bills. Then Paula got very lucky. A friend of hers was a guitarist who worked with Peter Gabriel. He toured with Peter's annual World of Music, Arts, and Dance show. One of the stars of the show was supposed to be Sinead O'Connor. But Sinead had to drop out, and Peter Gabriel was desperate for a replacement. His guitarist told Peter he should listen to Paula Cole sing. In classic Hollywood style, Paula wowed Peter and landed the job. She landed a lot of attention as well, which led to one of the top hits in the USA five years ago this week. Here's Paula Cole and I Don't Want to Wait. So open up your morning light. Say a little prayer for I You know that if we are to stay alive And see the peace in every eye The hits 